Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Campbell and today we are going to be talking about how to duck dive bigger waves. Let's roll that intro. Duck diving bigger waves really means that there is a greater task because you've got to go out on bigger waves. But understanding how waves break and what happens on the wave itself is very important to understanding where you can get under the waves and how you can actually duck dive a lot better with the waves that you get given. Now in this how to video, I would like to discuss with you guys the best way to get under a wave and reading waves as how they're breaking and where the high and low pressure points of the wave are. This will help you to get through the waves a lot easier and make it so that you can duck out bigger waves and make it a lot easier for you guys in all conditions. Firstly, we're gonna look at this diagram drawn by Mark Stewart. Now this is drawn a long time ago by Mark in order to help people to understand how waves work and how the energy continues to flow throughout a wave. So when we look at this diagram, we're going to focus on a number of different things. First of all, we're going to look at how the wave breaks. Now when it barrels, there are two elements inside the wave that you need to know about. First of all is the shock wave, which is formed by the impact of the lip actually hitting the water and bouncing back up into the barrel, as well as the trough. Now often you hear people talk about the trough, where they fell into the trough or they disappeared into the trough. And this is basically what happens when the shock wave shoots that little section up. Now when we look at where the wave breaks and where that first impact hits, that is generally a very dangerous place to be. That is a place where there's a lot of turbulence in the water, but straight afterwards we find our first primary low pressure system. Again, this will happen over and over as the wave keeps going and dissipates onto the shore and that will mean that you get a second impact as well as a third impact as well as having a secondary and a third low pressure from where the wave is. So talking about the impacts and the low pressures we can see that directly after a wave has broken there is a low pressure. Basically what you want to be doing is duck diving in the low pressures and avoiding these impact sections. This will make it easier for you to find air pockets to travel up to the surface as well as not being hit by those heavy sections where the wave is actually landing. Trying to avoid those places at all costs will benefit you in helping you get to the surface that much easier as well as allowing you to fall into those low pressures in order to get under the wave a lot easier and actually avoid the white water altogether. Now before we look at the next four steps to duck diving bigger waves, I'd just like to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Today's sponsor is Euroback. So the Euroback brand is a company that deals in fight, surf, street and life. They are clothing with an ethically produced promise. Euroback loves our people and our planet. The clothing industry with its throwaway mentality has developed a reputation for unethical working conditions with the horror stories to back it up. Euroback doesn't want that shit. They care about the lives of the people that make their product and want to do their bit to support them. That's why they've inspected the working conditions of all the factories and can proudly guarantee that their products are ethically produced. Euroback has completely eliminated plastic from their packaging and postage. Since the end of 2018, They've aimed to completely eliminate plastic packaging from their clothing. So go check Euroback brand out on Instagram as well as check out their website in the link in the description below. Now getting back to the video, I want to take you guys through four main steps on how to duck dive bigger waves. The first step is to figure out where the energy is in the wave. Now looking at that diagram, you can clearly see that the first point of impact is where the most energy is going to be on the wave and then obviously the second point and the third point after and so on and so on. Now it is very important to not get caught in these positions. When you do, you find yourself in a whirlwind of issues and ironically, that's really what happens to you. Next, you're gonna position yourself correctly. 
Now with duck diving, there are many videos on YouTube to go and figure out exactly how to duck dive. But putting yourself in the right position in order to get under the wave is very, very crucial. This will either make you get under the wave very quickly and efficiently, or on the opposite side, not at all efficiently, and you're gonna get slammed into the sand, or you're gonna get knocked back and end up paddling that much further. The third step would be to use air pockets. Now the idea of using air pockets is to allow you to get to the surface a lot quicker and a lot easier. I've done this in a lot of places, including big areas like Hawaii and Nazareth, where you really get stuck on the inside. Now using the air pockets, it allows you to kind of maneuver your way up through the breaking waves and through the white water and will allow you to break the surface a lot easier and a lot quicker. That way you also don't get pushed down and pushed under for extended periods of time. And the final step is don't fight the water. The ocean is a very powerful beast and fighting the water is just going to end in a losing battle. Stay calm, keep thinking about what you are about to do and make sure that you can get to the surface. Whenever you find yourself in that situation where you're really stressed out, remember that staying calm will help you get to the surface. Relaxing and not fighting the wave is the best way to get out of it. I'm going to take you guys through a couple videos to just talk about exactly what I was thinking when I was duck diving certain waves. I hope this helps you guys in understanding exactly where to go and how to position yourself and using these steps to get back to the surface and get under those bigger waves. Let's get into it. As you can see, my positioning on this wave looks okay. I go to duck dive and I'm actually hit by the impact. You can see the dark water right there that hits me and I'm able to make it to the surface, break the surface, and there's no waves afterwards. Next, we're gonna look at this wave. The same thing happens, but I just make it under that impact and I'm able to just break the surface with no white water. Next, we're gonna go onto this one, a very white watery section. I go to duck dive it, and you can actually see how long it takes me to battle through the white water and try to break the surface. But eventually I get up and I keep paddling out and that's Nazare for you. Lastly, we're gonna look at a really good example. I'm paddling up to the wave, I can see it's broken, I'm in the right position, I duck dive, look for a little air pocket, you can see the lighter water there, it's, the air pocket pushes me up to the surface and I break the surface with not much effort needed to keep going and paddling out. So guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys kind of understood exactly how to get under waves and you guys can start to understand how waves break. That diagram from Mark Stewart is extremely important when trying to get under bigger waves and it is one of the key things that I've used in order to get to the back at a lot of places around the world. So don't forget, remember your limits and know exactly when it is safe to go out. If in doubt, don't paddle out. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up as it helps the channel and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you want to get notified about these videos. We'll see you next time. You.